hi let's try to understand what is purchasing power parity so you might have come across a fact a very interesting fact as of now india is said to be fifth largest economy fifth largest economy in nominal terms whereas india is third largest in terms of uh, purchasing power parity terms so most of you would be thinking so how does it matter and what's the basic difference between fifth largest economy in nominal terms third largest in terms of purchasing power parity so why is the ranking changing so that's the okay uh, question that would be clear i mean you would be getting an answer once we have to look at uh, the concept of purchasing power parity and i would suggest you just to go ahead i mean just go through the video that i have made with respect to the difference between normal exchange rate and real exchange rate so that would help you to better understand the concept of purchasing power parity so what do you mean by purchasing power simply what the basket of goods that your rupee could fetch in your country that's it let's say if you look at imagine that 80 rupees is what cost you to buy a dollar and i am calling this as a normal exchange rate so right now in the forex market the number of rupees you are expected to forego to buy one unit of american currency is what i'm calling as a normal exchange rate and if you could recollect the real exchange rate is the same concept expressed simply in terms of a basket of goods that's it or normal exchange rate adjusted to inflation isn't it but the question here in this case is let's confine our discussion to purchasing power parity parity refers to similarity and purchasing power does mean every currency in their respective economies do has a certain purchasing power let's say if 80 rupees is required to buy a dollar does that mean what 80 rupees can buy in india the basket of goods that 80 rupees can buy in india is what the basket that one dollar can buy in usa it's not necessary it's not necessary if you look at most of the labor intensive goods are very cheaper in this country so rupee has a very good amount of purchasing power with respect to labor intensive goods whereas when it comes to capital intensive goods dollar in usa has a great amount of purchasing power that's it so purchasing power simply refers to the ability of your currency to buy a certain basket that's it so if it has a, okay if it gets you a very big basket that's when your rupee has a great purchasing power that's it so now as i already made it clear 80 rupee equal to dollar doesn't necessarily mean that whatever basket that 80 can get you is not the same basket you could get it for a dollar in usa now let's try to use the same example imagine a chocolate bar or let's say a pen one pen in india costs you rupees 20 whereas the same pen in american market costs you dollar costs you dollar so now don't you really think i could use the very simple math like if i consider pen or this basket as a and this is b and again this is a this is c so if a equal to b and a equal to c i could equate c with b does mean rupees 20 in this case could be equated to dollar what does it mean it simply does mean at this rate of exchange at this rate of exchange both the currencies with respect to this basket has the same purchasing power so at this 20 per dollar what 20 can buy in india what does it can buy one pen or one basket of goods or one dollar what does it could buy one pen in usa or you could replace this with a basket so ideally okay the very common practice that to the magazine economist uses is a basket or what you okay simply the big mac that mcdonald sells it's like a hamburger so in india you could call people generally call it a mc maharaja i guess so because that consists of various basket of goods isn't it you have the bread and the lettuce and then you have the sauces okay a lot many things so rather than simply using a term called basket i am simply referring to one particular good that's a pen that's it so don't get confused so either it's a pen or you could simply call it a basket of goods but to make things simple to keep things simple i'm just assuming a pen so if you have noticed the fact rupees 20 can buy a certain basket of goods and the same basket you okay you need to forego one dollar in usa henceforth i could equate 20 for a dollar because 
at this exchange rate they have similar purchasing powers in their respective countries that's it that's what's a purchasing power parity so i would call this exchange rate is an exchange rate based on their purchasing power based on the purchasing power of the currencies in their respective markets then what do you call this exchange rate this is, is simply the market determined exchange rate what is called nominal exchange rate and i would explain the difference why why is it okay people in india are willing to forego 80 for a dollar when 20 rupees has the same purchasing power for a dollar that's something we'll try to figure it out but now let me also make it clear why is the ranking different measured in terms of nominal terms or measured in terms of a pp2 terms let's say in india we produce some output and americans produce also a similar amount of a similar type of output but okay for this particular class we just assume both india usa produces a similar output and let's suppose they produce a similar basket of goods and i am assuming that both the company okay markets produce same that is a pence let's say our annual output is 12 pence and the americans have produced in a year six pence or six basket of goods but i would use pens and each pen in my country right now is costing 20 whereas each pen each pen i mean every pen in, in my country costing 20 but a pen in usa costs one dollar that's the current market rate and now let's take the normal exchange rate 80 rupees is per a dollar and purchasing power parity based exchange rate 20 rupees per a dollar because at this rate they have the same purchasing power but market may each other that's the reason i call normal exchange rate and this is based on ppp terms purchasing power parity terms got it now coming back express these 12 pence in terms of nominal gdp okay in terms of rupee terms it's going to be 12 multiplied 20 240 rupees am i right and this six pence each pen costs you one dollar so the american gdp is a six dollar but one is in rupees the other is in dollars it doesn't make sense comparing apple with oranges so let me convert these rupees into dollars and if i take this exchange rate the normal exchange rate one rupee sorry one dollar is equal to 80 rupees so it does mean 240 rupees could be okay converted into three dollars right three eights isn't it 24 so now if i express my output at the current market rate of exchange or at normal exchange rate my economy is a three dollar economy but their economy american economy is six dollar economy though in real terms i am producing more output in real terms i am producing more output but in nominal terms i am ranked second us ranked the first that's what i mean to say okay gdp measured at nominal terms but let's use the purchasing power parity based exchange rate because at this rate of exchange both the currencies have same purchasing power so if i take this exchange rate and express my output in terms of dollars so every dollar is worth 20 rupees so in such case i could express this 240 rupees as a 12 dollars because rather than using the normal exchange rate i am simply taking the purchasing power parity based exchange rate in such case what would be the rank okay gdp of my country expressed in dollars is 12 dollars and whereas american gdp is six dollars so now who is ranked the first we are ranked the first and then americans if you look at they have been ranked second and you could apply the same logic that explains the reason why india is ranked fifth largest in nominal terms whereas it is ranked third largest in terms of ppp terms that's it so if you look at america in nominal terms happens to be the richest largest economy but in ppp terms i guess you might be figured it out by this time that china happens to be the largest economy next comes usa next comes uh, india and you know in ppp terms the size of indian economy is equal to the size of uh, economies of uk germany france combined together and i'm simply saying in ppp terms purchasing power parity based terms isn't it that's what we are trying to find it out now the question here in this case is when rupee 20 has the same purchasing power on par with the dollar then why we indians are so generous to exchange 80 rupees for a dollar because market pay each other and this is what people are willing to pay but if you notice it 
at this rate of exchange they have a similar purchasing power then why why are we paying so much of rupees in fact you might have noticed the dollar has been overvalued dollar has been overvalued because it could fetch four basket of similar indian goods so dollar is overvalued and rupee is undervalued in this scenario isn't it then why why are people willing to the simple logic is that imagine in an ideal world if people are exchanging their currencies only for the sake of uh, trade i mean to say exchange of goods and services i mean the very basic essence of uh, buying a foreign currency or selling a foreign currency to buy a domestic currency is only with an intention to exchange or buy goods and services ideally this should be the exchange rate but why do people buy a foreign currency there have been n number of reasons behind it people need foreign currency to invest people need money to borrow people need money to remit and moreover some people would also go for a speculation like dollar might experience a rise or rupee might experience a fall is it data so people do these things in a market right forex markets currency markets speculation shorting is it data so that's a very basic reason since the demand for foreign currency or dollar in my country is for reasons beyond trade that explains the reason why people are willing to pay more rupees for a dollar but if people want the okay i mean convert currency only for the sake of trade maybe this should have been the exchange rate is that clear that's what see okay meaning of the term purchasing power parity i hope you got it right thank you